this is VLMP2, and this is VLMP Pro, the two latest heatset insert presses from Vector3D. Today, I'm going to give you the buyer's guide. This is all the information when it comes to soldering irons, tips, grips, STLs, 3D printed parts all over the machine, and the hardware and sourcing. You probably already know that PCBWay offer high quality PCBs, but did you know they also have a 3D printing and CNC manufacturing service? Start by uploading your file to get an instant quote and design for manufacturer feedback. You can choose from a wide range of processes and materials to get just what you need at the quality that you expect. Make your payment and manufacturer lead time is just two days away, keeping you up to pace with many industries such as automotive, medical, dental, aerospace or consumer electronics. Track your orders online and receive your delivery on time and on budget. Get started today with the link in the video description. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this segment of the video. Starting with perhaps the biggest difference between these two designs is what's included. With VLMP Pro, everything, barring tools, is included in the box. One purchase, no decisions, everything is there. With VLMP2 though, you have options when it comes to the soldering iron, the tips, the grip, the STLs, the printed parts, and the general hardware. So let's go through each of those different categories so you understand what you need, what you could get, what your options are, what your choices are, and in terms of settings and stuff for printing parts. Let's take a look at the soldering iron compatibility. Starting with VLMP Pro, the soldering iron compatibility is just this one. This is the Hands Kit 927, and it's the only soldering iron that can be used with VLMP Pro. That's the way it is, because we've designed and optimized it around that single soldering iron, so that's the one you get in the package. I think it's a really great soldering iron for the job. I did test quite a few before settling on this one, so I'm confident this will do the job. When it comes to VLMP2, however, pretty much anything goes when it comes to the soldering iron. And there's a reason for that. There are three main factors to consider when using a soldering iron on a heat set insert press in terms of adaptability. Firstly, the length, and that's the distance between the tip here and the handle part here. We can accommodate various different lengths because we have two different arm lengths. If you have a longer soldering iron like this one, then you need the longer arm. If you have a shorter one like this one, then you use the shorter arm. That's pretty logical. The second thing is the weight for which of course we have a very adaptable counterweight by being able to take it down like close to zero and up to really quite high, like kind of ridiculous high. I've allowed for pretty much any soldering iron weight you could possibly want to put on the other end. The third thing is the grip size. Now we provide some like bespoke grips. Obviously we have one designed for the hands kit 927. We have one for TS100 and TS101 and we'll try to add a few more like specific ones with like weird shape handles coming soon. However, the reason we should be able to support pretty much any one is that we have a customizable tapered grip. It does require a little bit of fusion work on Autodesk Fusion, but I've made it a really simple video. Like it's really, really easy. You just take a couple of measurements, type some numbers in some boxes and ta-da, you get a new grip. So that's how we kind of support, hopefully pretty much every soldering iron on VLMP2. Now let's move on to soldering iron tips. These are really important for heat set inserts, but if you've not used them before, you may not realize why. So let me cover that first. A soldering iron that you buy typically, like this one, will come with a conical soldering tip, meaning it's wider at the base and goes up to a point. While this obviously gets hot and therefore will melt the plastic and allow you to press the heat set insert in, it does have a couple of problems. The first problem we face is that the point of the cone may protrude beyond the size of the heat set insert. Its length might not be long enough to cover it, and therefore, as you press the heat set insert into the printed part, that cone shaped hot tip will point through and melt all the plastic beyond it, which is not great. You don't want that to happen. The second problem is that conical shaped tip doesn't have a flat surface, so it can kind of align itself on weird ways with that heat set insert. So just because you move the soldering iron vertically, like perfectly maybe, it may not necessarily push the heat set insert perfectly because it's got no flat face to reference against. The third problem we have is jamming, basically. As you press the soldering iron with that conical shaped tip into the heat set insert, it just gets stuck. So you've pressed it all the way into the perfect place. You're like, yes, that's exactly where I need it. 
you pull the soldering iron out and the heat set insert just comes with it. There's actually a fourth thing as well with the conical shaped tips is that they're just a kind of standard generic size. And as soon as you go to a larger heat set inserts, maybe in the like M5 or M6 up to even M8 range, it might not even touch the walls of the heat set insert. So it just wouldn't work at all. So instead of using the tips that are included with soldering irons, we use these specialist ones from CNC Kitchen. And they've got a range for pretty much any soldering iron going. So we're pretty confident that you'll find one to suit your soldering iron. The difference between the conical shape and the specialist design tips is that the specialist ones are in a kind of stepped shape. They're kind of squared off, which means A, you have a flat surface for pressing the heat set in, and you also have a locator in the middle to make sure that it's in the right place as you apply pressure. Moving on now, let's talk about how you can source the hardware for these two machines. Of course, in general, I'd prefer that you come to Vector 3D to get all the hardware. We have kits for all of these things, so that makes it super easy. That being said, obviously, you may want to do your own thing. So let's cover kind of what will work and what won't work. Starting with VLMP Pro. We've used still quite a lot of the kind of 3D printer based parts like we have with VLMP2 in VLMP Pro. So by and large, lots of the hardware is fairly common. However, in order to kind of optimize and professionalize and make it more durable design, there are bespoke parts in this machine for which we don't provide design files. So if you want spares for those specialist bits, you will need to come to us for those. However, for the rest of the general hardware, if you want to go elsewhere, you can, that's fine. Although we don't provide like all the specifications for all of those things. When it comes to, of course, the SDLs, all the printed parts, those are all included in the purchase. So if you need to reprint stuff, if something gets damaged or whatever, you can of course do that yourself. Quite simple for VLMP Pro as always, because you get everything in the kit and it all just is there. When it comes to VLMP2 though, again, there are many options. So in general, all the hardware used on this machine is just general 3D printing, like hardware stuff. It's like, it's mostly really easy to get hold of. The only exception to that really would probably be the extrusion. Well, you can get extrusion in whatever various lengths. For this design to work, you do need to have the ends tapped and that's not so common an operation. So you may find that you'll have to do that yourself, although that's fairly easy because it's aluminium. Now let's move on to printing the parts and the grips. So the first thing to notice when printing parts is that the file names include not only the name of the part, but also some kind of information in terms of quantity and colors. The first thing we do is add a suffix of X1, X2, X3, etc. for the quantity required. So if it says X3, you need three of them. The other part we have at the end is in square brackets and that refers to the coloring. The first letter is A and that means accent. So for example, on this black and gold machine, the gold is the accent color, so any parts that come up with an A, I would print in gold. The next we have is M, and those are the multicolor parts designed for a multi-material system. When you print those parts, the main color is always the largest body, and all the smaller bodies are the accent color. And then lastly, we have MP, and these are similar to M, but they're a multi-part file, but still for multicolor. So for example, this part on the back, the multi-part file will have this and all the little hexagons. You'll use the separate two objects or separate to parts. I forget which one it is, but basically you want to separate those two and then all the little bits you can print in the accent color. The big bit you print in the main color, in this case black. And then when they're printed, you stick them together using like super glue and stuff. So you can have all the accents still like you'd see on this machine, but without the need for a multi-material system on your printer. The second thing to mention is support material. This is really important. Most of the parts, pretty much every single one, can be printed without any support material because I've designed it to be that way. However, the base, because of its complex design in terms of upper and like underside features, you do need to use some support materials for the best outcome, but it's not actually required in order for it to function. There is a 3MF file included, and that has the supports in place so you can see where they need to be. You can either print that file like as it is, or if you want to, you can just use that as a guide to show you where the supports need to go and you can add them in yourself. I do recommend using the kind of like normal supports, like the ones we've had for like 
years and years and years rather than the newer tree type supports just because the profile is really low so I find the kind of grid network in the older style supports generally works the best. The next thing to mention is material. For VLMB Pro pretty much all of it is ABS with the exception of these two bump stops which are in TPU because they're obviously like the collide bits for, for this so they need to be a little bit flexible and extra durable. So those two are TPU but everything else is printed in ABS. When it comes to VLMP2, this is like 90% PLA, and the only bit that isn't is the grip, which you must print in ABS. But everything else here can be printed in PLA, which makes it really quite easy to print on pretty much all machines. The base is quite large, so if your bed doesn't fit this size thing, then you can't do it. So we've designed a smaller one, which will fit onto a 180 millimeter bed. The actual base is 170 by 170, which gives you 10 mil of space, right, five mil either side, for a little bit of brim and stuff if you want to add that too. When it comes to settings, these are really important too. Specifically, the grips. Three perimeters, 15% infill, always. That means we get the amount of like gripping, because if you print it like solid, then it won't flex and therefore won't be able to grip or will grip too hard on the soldering iron. And if it's too weak, then it will just not be strong enough to like re-clamp the soldering iron. When it comes to all the other parts on VLMP2, the minimum I'd suggest is probably two perimeters, 15% infill, but you can go definitely more than that. And I would probably encourage, I would probably recommend three perimeters. You can do four if you fancy. On VLMP Pro, we do four perimeters and I think 30 or 40% infill, depending on if it's me printing it or the supplier, which we'll talk about in another video. So there we go. Now we've covered the full buyer's guide. Hopefully you've got everything you need to know in terms of printing, soldering irons, tips, and all that extra stuff that you'll need to get along with your VLMP2 to make sure you have everything. Of course, as always, VLMP2 is like sourcing easy mode. You just buy the thing, and everything you need arrives in a box. You can leave some feedback and stuff in the comments below if you think we should adapt these a little bit for your purposes. But don't be too critical because it'll just be annoying. <laughs> uh, yes, thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring the video and don't forget to check out the links in the video description to vector3d.shop to get both of these wonderful inset prices.